Whenever we have motion in two dimensions, the horizontal motion is independent from the vertical motion. That same concept applies to forces. Vertical and horizontal forces are independent. So in this example, we have forces in two dimensions. Some are horizontal. You see the 12 Newton and 30 Newton force. Those are horizontal. And the 11 Newton force is vertical. To find the net force, we have to consider the horizontal and vertical independently. And we can do either one first. Let's look at the horizontal forces first. I have 30 newtons to the right and 12 newtons to the left. And you can think of the 30 newtons to the right as positive and the 12 newtons to the left as negative. The net force horizontally is going to be 18 newtons to the right. I'm just considering the horizontal forces. Think 30 minus 12 gives me the 18. Positive 18, so it's 18 to the right. Vertically, there's only one force to consider vertically, and that's the 11 newtons, and it's down. So I can, I can imagine these two horizontal forces, the 30 and the 12, being replaced by a single 18 newton force to the right. And I can draw a picture like this. I'll draw my mass and I'll draw two forces acting on it. 18 newtons to the right and 11 newtons down. Those two forces will combine to produce a net force like this. And I'll call it F. And we can find that using the Pythagorean theorem. You see this is 11 here and if this is 18 over there, then this is 18 right there. So if I look just at this triangle, I have 11 and 18 for the legs, and so I can find the hypotenuse. So F squared is going to equal 11 squared plus 18 squared, and that's 121 plus 324 and that comes out to 445 and so F the net force is going to be the square root of that the square root of 445 and that comes out to 21.1 and that's Newtons 21.1 Newtons in this direction as shown by that arrow right there so 21.1 newtons down and to the right, and a little bit more to the right than down. That's the net force.